Blog Talk Radio. Is it really you? Yes, it's really me. How can you be here? I'm alive. You have to stop dying. Coming back, you're going to give me a heart attack. Welcome to Take Two Radio. We are pleased to bring you interviews with people in the entertainment and music industry, discussions and recaps of the four remaining daytime soaps, that's The Bold and the Beautiful, The Young and the Restless, General Hospital, and Days of Our Lives, as well as various other shows. For upcoming and previous shows, check Take2Radio.com, that's with the number two, and you can find us on Blog Talk Radio, iHeart Radio, iTunes, and other streaming apps. Follow us on social media at Take Two Radio, and thanks for listening. Well, good evening, everyone. This is David for Take Two Radio, um, subbing in for Pam, who is ill. Tonight, we welcome Tonya Pinkins, an award-winning actress, director, singer, and author. She has graced the screens in television and movies, as well as the stages of Broadway. Our self-audience will remember her as Heather Dalton on As the World Turns or as Libby Fry on All My Children. Welcome, Tonya. Thank you for joining us tonight. Hey, David. Thanks so much for having me. Welcome, welcome, welcome. (laughs) Welcome, welcome. How many people are there? Um, before, yeah, before before we start off, Tonya, I just want to leave my apologies to our my uh, my supervisor Pam. About two hours ago, she was in she was in an automobile accident, oh. and she she's okay. She's resting home comfortably, um, but she felt really bad. She couldn't make it to meet you tonight, and she wants to send her apologies to you and your oh, team. Well, I just hope she takes care of herself. People are more important than things, so she's got to take care of herself. Yes, Amen. that is, and she will appreciate your th- good thoughts. But she did send me her opening questions for you, if I may start with you for her. Go for it. Okay. Would you share your journey into acting and what inspired you to pursue a career in the entertainment industry? Uh, I don't know. You know, I'm an old woman now. I think about things like that. I don't know. Um, I think I used to, you know, imitate Lily Tomlin as Edith Ann, and I think maybe my mother noticed that I like to play pretend, and so she put me in some acting classes in Chicago when I was about nine years old. So that probably was the beginning. And then in elementary school, we had a teacher who loved to rent all the costumes and put on, you know, full productions of of, of the, the hit Broadway shows. So, yeah, that would be where I got my start. Oh, that sounds that sounds uh, really amazing. I bet you had a wonderful time. I did. I got to play Anna in The King and I, and he rented the hoop skirts and the dresses when I was in eighth grade. Oh, God. I, I was bit, too, but I couldn't make that plunge like you did. Um, well, uh, here you yeah. are still doing something I hope that you love. I am. Are you ready for... Question number two. I'm ready. Yeah. Okay. You sound. You've had a diverse career in theater, film, and television. How do you navigate the different demands of each medium? You know, I um, people just tell me that they don't make people like me. I am uh, a multitasker, plain and simple. And I get bored really easily, and I need to be doing like 10 things at one time. That's just how my mind works, and it's taken me till 
maybe my 50s to actually realize that and accept that and not be criticizing myself and trying to tell myself to pay attention and focus. No, I was made to multitask, and I'm at my happiest when I'm doing a whole bunch of things. Like last year, I was planning a concert on a TV series and finishing up a film that I had produced and directed all at the same time and planning oh, to wow. go traveling to, like, 20 different countries. And I was like, yeah, that's that's just the level at which I like to function. <laughs> oh, that's, that sounds amazing. That, those are wonderful. That sounds so wonderful. Okay, now I got, I'm going to bring you to my personal questions that I did. I have to tell you, um, I'm going to take you back probably 10 years. Okay. And one of my all-time favorites I remember you in is Ethel Peabody in Gotham. Yes. What did you love about being in that production and did you and how was and how was the atmosphere working with everybody? That show was like my first really fun, juicy role, and um, I was only brought on for like four episodes, and B.D. Wong is such a gracious and brilliant actor. Um, He had said to me one day, like, um, well, we're going to have fun this season, and I said, oh, B.D., I'm not here this season. And he was like, what do you mean? I said, well, they just brought me on to assist you in four episodes. He said, we'll fix that. And then he and I just started creating all of this behavior to build a relationship with one another. And the writers started writing to it to, to us. And so it was great. Oh, I loved, I loved it. I wish there was more for you. I loved we You had were wonderful. Ball. Thank you. That was so much fun, and it was an opportunity to learn how to be interesting on camera when you don't have a lot of lines. I I can just imagine it would drive me nuts because I'd want to speak, but you had you had to actually you were just be you interesting. had to just stand there and you know look. Even, but you yeah, were just, like. You were awesome. I can just imagine. We had a good time. Okay. We had a very good time. And the cast, everybody was quite wonderful there. Okay, now I'm going to take you back even further to when I first saw you. As you were brought into As the World Turns in the mid-'80s, who were your go-to people for showing you the ropes of daytime television and how do you apply it today? All my children? As the world turns. As the world turns. Oh, that show was rough. That show was rough. Yeah, that was a rough show. That was a rough room. That was a rough place to be. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't have much good to say about that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a rough, rough, rough place. It was, it was very not good energy. People were miserable and happy. The writers were writing their personal lives into the shows, making oh, wow. them. Um, oh. Yeah, it was not. It was. It was a very, very, very negative uh, environment. Well, David, maybe we could readjust it and ask her to answer it on the basis of all my children instead. Libby. <laughs> yeah. Well, All My Children is a show I grew up watching as a kid, so um, I that was like a dream come true to get to be on this show that I've been watching since I was like seven years old. So that had its own very special thing about it, you know? You wanted me to find a go-to person. I'm just not the go-to kind of girl. I kind of always march to the beat of my own drum. You know, I'm trying to think. People that I would go to. Mm, Walt Willie and I, when I was on All My Children, 
Walt and I, I think our first day on set, we just decided we were partners in a law firm together, and we decided we were going to play love and sex (laughs) with no line saying anything like that. And we did that in one scene, and they never put us in a scene alone together again. <laughs> oh, wow. I was mad at that. I was mad about that as a young kid because I understood the assignment, and I was always questioning it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, that. Thank you very much for answering my answering sure. uh, my questions. I'm I'm going to give you to Candace. Hi, Miss Hey, Candace. Hey. hey. Okay, so this is I'm I'm nervous because okay I I let me just clarify this real quick. I have admired you for such a long time. Oh, thank you. And because, like you said, you march your own beat. You don't follow everybody else. You have set the tone for a lot of us to do our own thing without second-guessing it. Yeah, I know you probably do, but you have shown that you don't take no for an answer. And I just want to say true. that I admire you. I admire you for that. So, okay. That was the thing, you know. So that goes into my first question. As we know, it is Women's History Month, which, by the way, I think it should be all the time and not just a certain month. That's just me. Yeah, I'm with you. Right? Who are some women that has or have inspired you? Women who have inspired me. There are a lot of them. I think maybe the first woman who really inspired me, and it's going to sound like a weird thing, was Jane Fonda and her exercise thing. I was like, here's this woman who, like, was, you know, had bulimia or whatever, anorexia, and she got America exercising. And then there was Eve Ensler, who, you know, out of the sex abuse in her life, she got women to be able to talk about their vaginas. Um, other women who have inspired me. Those Two ladies were sheroes for me. Kimberly Crenshaw, uh, who coined the phrase um, intersectionality, one of the most brilliant minds I know on the planet, can, you know, social justice, you want her on your team. So those would be my three three women that I admire a lot. Okay. I know when you when you know when somebody asks you that question, it's like, oh wow, there's so many. How do you narrow it down, and then go from there? Because everybody, I can I can speak for myself. There's I I couldn't I couldn't just pick three. <laughs> That's just me. Everybody knows I yeah. always say I, I always have like multiple. I'm like, yeah, okay, you said five, okay, tied with. So, <laughs> but, <laughs> okay, my next question is this. Prime time, daytime, movies, podcasting, of course, being a Tony Award winner, you've done most of it all. What would you like to A little to bit of everything. Next? A little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. Like a little it. bit of this, a little bit of that. Make a nice sauce. What would you yep. like to accomplish next? What's next? What's next for you? Well, quite honestly, next for me is to visit every country in the world, and there are 195 of them, and I've only been to 81. That's more than some of us. (laughs) (laughs) I hear you. Right, and that's a blessing. That is a blessing. You know know that. Okay, so coming up next. Coming up next, World Traveler, Miss Tanya. That's that's, That's a web series. That's a web series. That could be your next web series or podcast. Yeah, I'm just, I've been traveling. I love traveling. I love, I am, I am in my element when I'm in a foreign country and I don't know anything and I'm just sitting with people and they're telling me about the way they live. That makes me so, so happy. I I, I can definitely imagine that. Just to get away, get away and absorb the culture. It's my, it's my biggest education, really. 
Like mm. it's where I learn, you know, that the things that I read about in the books really aren't like that in reality. Right, right. Well, yeah. I'll, I'm going to say this. Safe travel. Thank you. Make sure that, you know, everything's okay because we want to hear we want to hear about it. I want to hear. Oh, about you know, when I travel, I'm like, if it's my time, it's my time. As long as I go doing something that I love, that's all that matters. A- amen. amen, amen. All right, I'm gonna well, throw an amen in there too. Right. <laughs> that's that's the that's the whole motto for 2024 for I think for a lot of us. It's just yeah. Do what you love to do, and also mm-hmm. don't don't take those no's. Just yeah. Mm-hmm. Say yes. And try to be complete every day. Like if I think of somebody, I contact them or I reach out to try to contact them. I want to be complete. So if this is my next moment, I want to make sure I'm complete and right with everybody as best I can. I know that's right. Well, thank you for answering my questions. I'm for going sure. to turn it over to, I think, is it going to be Vinny next? Vinny. Or are we going after? Vinny. Vinny. Yes. Vinny, you're up. Vinny. Vinny. Hi, Tanya. How are you today? I am divine. Do you prefer Tonya or Tanya? It's Tanya. Tanya. Okay. Just wanted to make Those sure. Those other people with the um, A, their name is Tanya. How about that? Ah, okay. <laughs> that makes sense. All right. Fine. Um, I do have a couple of questions for you. Um, Only a couple. One of the first, yeah. Uh, the first one is, um, what advice do you have for aspiring actors especially those looking to make a meaningful impact in the industry? You know, the business is changing radically. AI is transforming everything. So Mm -hmm. the advice I have to anybody aspiring to get into this thing right now is to create your own work. Like all the tools are there. Create your own work. Be your own boss. Find a niche audience that likes you and know that it's going to start slow, you know, Mm -hmm. but um, study with the best teachers, figure out who you want to work with and make a list of those people. So anytime you have an opportunity to get a chance to work with them, jump at it, but make sure you are bringing something to the table because now we all have to compete with AI. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be able to show off what you can do. It's not enough to even just come in and, and, and audition well. you got to, like, have some extra extra special sauce. <laughs> yeah, I can definitely understand that. You have to stand out from the pack. And you're going to stand out from the pack by being a content creator. You know, get yeah. you and your friends together and create something. Put it on YouTube, TikTok, whatever platform that is available, or find an audience in your community and build your own audience. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's that's probably the hardest thing to do. I've tried it myself. Um, but it's the only thing in, worth doing. No matter how hard it yes. is, if you keep it up, it's eventually going to happen. If you just mm-hmm. keep going, you know, and it's yeah. going to be slow for years. But it's yours. Yeah. And all the energy is into something that you own, you know. Nobody can mm-hmm. fire you from your business. That's true. No, absolutely. Um. My second question is, can you share any memorable or challenging experiences um, from your time on Broadway? Memorable, challenging, I've got all of those. Uh, (laughs) Okay. Let's see. Well, my first Broadway show was with Hal Prince and Steve Sondheim doing Merrily We Roll Along. So, I mean, that was a show that previewed for two months and then closed in two weeks. (laughs) <laughs> wow okay yeah so you know that was like these were the gods of the theater they were the most successful uh broadway team in history and then i got to be in their first flop <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um so yeah that was definitely very memorable um what else i mean winning the tony that was something i dreamed of my entire life which i won for jelly's life jam and getting to share the stage with Gregory Hines and Savion Glover and Keith David. I just saw the show. They just did it at um, Lincoln Center. Wow, what an extraordinary show that is. And I got to be a part of it the first time around. It's really an extraordinary show. It really changed the face of the theater. Wow, that's, that's impressive. Yeah. Um, 
All right. Well, thank you so much for answering my questions. Um, Absolutely. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Anthony now, who's going to be the uh, anchor of the team. Okay. Okay, Anthony. <clears throat> How many of you all are I, over there? I'm the last one. I'm the cleanup Adam, Miss Tanya. <laughs> the cleanup. Uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> Clean it up. Clean it up. But um, I like Candace want to go uh, a little bit deep. And I grew up in New York City, so I have had the opportunity to be exposed to a lot. Um, and I took okay. every advantage and every opportunity. I begged for free tickets. I stood on lines. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, I enriched myself, and, and I lived all that New York had to offer. Um, having said that, I have had the pleasurable opportunity to see you both on Broadway and singing. Um, so let's talk about the voice. Um, it, it is I, – I've – I would, I'm a writer at heart too, um, I would write it as rich and luscious tuxedo cake mm. coming out of a statuesque and extremely talented woman. So can oh, you talk a little you. bit, <laughs> thank you, I mean, you're welcome very much. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, where you go, how, what's your preparation, what's your place to get that, that, that a body of emotion out and, and maybe talk a little bit about the audience connection as well? Well, I think, you know, we're in this moment in time where people are afraid to feel. And I was listening to a documentary today, and, and yeah. Arthur Miller w- was talking about how most of great art comes out of suffering. And yeah. I had a really hard time, um, like just a hard Growing up, I've had, a hard, I've had some really hard stuff happening in my life, but I've also had an amazing life. But so much of my artistry has come out of my pain. And getting on stage gave me this opportunity where I could put that. Like there's no, um, nobody's putting a limit on, on how emotional you can get when you're on stage. So it was yeah. always this privilege to me to have this place where if I'm hurting and I'm suffering, the character's going to be hurting and suffering, and I'm going to go all the way in, you know. And so you have this audience there who's in awe of that, whereas your friend would be tired of that. You know, if you had to take that to friends, they may not be able to handle that. So for <laughs> me, the work has been this privilege of, of, of working out all of the hardest things that I've ever ever gone through. The, the the work gave me a place to put all that, and in putting it there, it had an opportunity to inspire and transform um, other people who got to witness that, you know? Wow. Thank you. <clears throat> so um, my next question is... Oh, I want to say one other thing about the audience connection because I forgot that Please. part of the question. And that is that... Um, For me, an audience is my scene partner, and I like to play with them. Um, I like to take the audience on a very unexpected ride. Like, I like roller coasters. I like horror movies. And so, you know, as I've gotten, you know, I've been doing this professionally for like 50 years. Um, I like nothing better than to play a part that the audience is going to hate and then uh-huh. to make them love me. <laughs> and so sometimes if I have a character that the audience is going to love, I'm going to find some things in there for them to hate because I think it's just so important for us to realize that all of us contain every part of humanity. Uh, absolutely. I'm going to sneak another compliment in because as you were saying that, I was thinking to myself, you know, in so many different incarnations, you act with not only your entire body, but you also act with the space that's around you. Um, and I thought of that when you were talking about the audience as your, as your scene partner. Um, do, do you realize how much, you know, your, your face can change and, and you, you know, just a little swish that you put in a walk? How, do you realize how much that connects? I don't um, think in a third question. I don't question know, in, so. but I think – I think that I have a little bit of awareness now that I've been doing it for so long, but certainly in the beginning I was scared. I didn't know it was hit or miss. And my favorite 
sort of mantra is now, brilliance lies in the moment that might not work. And so I'm mm. not interested in coming in the room to play if there's not a chance that I might fail. Nice. Nice. So I snuck that question in. My last question for you is, is there a project, a role, is there something that, you know, you still dream of doing? Or is there, you know, a missed opportunity that you wish you had done? Or both? <laughs> um, no missed opportunities. Um, Brandon Jacob Jenkins and I have been working little bit by little bit for the last few years on a um, – a new version of Mother Courage. And so I do hope that we do our version of Mother Courage. Well, I hope you come back and talk to us then. Um, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Absolutely. You are a very classy lady. <laughs> well, thank you. Yes, thank, you're you. Very, thank you so much for coming aboard. We, we just loved having you. Oh, thank you so much. It's my pleasure. You are welcome back anytime. Anytime you okay. want to come back. Have a, have a good one. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, she's wonderful. Well, that, I love her. that is the magic of Take Two Radio. We, we get guests that open up and give us, and give us truth, give us themselves. Give, you know, we really... She was very, in the very beginning, I was a little nervous, like, okay, yeah, maybe she's not was, liking our questions. Um, she was just a little, she was holding back just a little bit. Um, but then she got the groove, and it was, Candace, 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 me, you go, girl. Yeah. Let, let me just say this about Anya. First and foremost, I wasn't, okay, let me let me backtrack. Growing up in in my my family, you know, we all have aunts. We all have those aunties, you know, stuff like that. And you guys all know that I'm a huge soap fan. I don't know if anybody knew that or not or didn't know, but now you know. Now you know. So in my head, I secret. always had, right, it's a, don't tell nobody. I had my soap aunt. Like, who would be my soap auntie? And Libby was one of them. Tanya was one of them. But here's the, here's the kicker. I also, and I was going to talk about it, I was like, we're going to have my son. I remember her from University Hospital, which for some of you guys, y'all might not remember that show, but it was a part of the Aaron Spelling, um, like, pack on syndication. And she played Nurse Jenkins. It was, look it up on YouTube. It was a great show and whatnot. The irony is that I actually had a Nurse Jenkins when I went to the doctor. <laughs> and I kept thinking, I really didn't think that it was it was going to be fine. So, you know, again, when you're a kid and stuff. But when I say that she is, she is a force. In a good way, she's a positive force. Because mm-hmm. she has done, I mean, again, ladies and gentlemen, a Tony Award winner. Think about mm-hmm. that. Think about that. Okay. Does she have won some Emmys? Yes. Yeah. Um. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh-huh. But she has such a presence that it just it just is really inspiring to to hear her talk because she like she just said she she just Hold goes for it. Right back. She just goes for it, you know. And I think that's something that we all need to really do. That's why I said in 2024, this is a, we're still technically in the freshman part of the year. Just go for it. You know, she has literally done it all. The woman is directing, producing, podcasting, web series, acting, theater, you know, movies and stuff. And now she's going to travel. So what, what was it, 189, 180, 190 countries? She's been through half of them. I haven't even yep. I haven't been to Paris yet. I mean, you know, so, I mean, she's just, a, and when we say legends, give them their flowers now. Give her all the flowers, you guys, seriously, because she is one of a kind. And, you, you know, when we get to the soap news, she is one of the top picks for the, the fantasy soap opera casting for a new yep. show that, yep. you know, it's, yeah. Can I just can I go ahead and do the news? 
truth. <laughs> Go ahead, girl. Roll into it. Okay. Y'all, wait a minute. Hold up. Let me get myself together. Because last Wednesday, everybody thought it was just an ordinary day. You was probably like, oh, it's cold outside. It's raining and stuff. We got Wait, news. honey, let me tell you, all okay. of a sudden, I was in the middle of a meeting. I'm on Zoom, and I had not put my phone on Do Not Disturb, and it just, it went off so hard, it threw itself off the desk, thank God, the floor is carpeted. Floor? It threw itself out, and I'm full, I'm fumbling, trying to get it, trying to pay attention to it. I'm like, oh, my God. It is. <laughs> Like, okay, this is where, this is where I was at. Of course, I was at work with the children. Shout out to my my babies, my class, and we were finishing up an art project. And all of a sudden, I just got a message. The irony is, it was my godparents who gave me this message, right? So I'm thinking something happened. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, was somebody in the family? I'm reading it. Hold on, guys. Um, okay. take over for me, guys. I'll be. Um, I have a little okay. emergency. Okay. Oh I'll God. come back as soon as I can. Okay. Um, so, you know, they're telling me, and I'm, all, I'm just seeing pictures. I'm just seeing pictures, right? So I'm like, okay, I'll wait. You guys, the news that broke Twitter, I'm not even joking. <sighs> CBS, home of Victor and Dumb, a.k.a. the Young and the Restless, the Bold and the Beautiful, the Price is Right, Let's Make a Deal, and the Talk has teamed up with the NWACP, okay, to create and develop a new soap opera. Hold on, hold on. I know, I'm, I know, I'm, don't worry, Anthony. I'm going to get to that part in a minute. The last developed soap that got green light was back in 99 with Passions. Y'all guys remember Passions, right? Okay. Obviously, Passions is no longer on the air. Totally speaking, the baby soap that's still on is the Bold and the Beautiful, which will be celebrating the anniversary um, in two weeks, actually. Okay. It was reported, if you guys remember that, after certain amount of years over Bold and Beautiful, that Michelle Von Jean was leaving the show. And everybody was banking. Anthony, Vinny, you, we, we might as well admit we all was wrong on this, too, because I think some of us thought it, too that she was going back to General Hospital, which she had a long career over there, yes. too. Let me However, jump in. Do you remember two shows ago I said, when we come back in March, but it got pushed, but when I, when I said when we come back in March, we're going to have you. something major, somebody connected with Michelle um, spilled a huh. little bit of tea, and mm-hmm. I was sworn to secrecy, you know, and I would have gotten, you know, this person, they would, their what? life would be destroyed. Um, I have been sitting on this for three weeks, just busting, just busting. So I am so, go ahead, continue. I just okay. have to throw that in. I know. So, <laughs> so it, you know, Michelle, you know, you made me lose my train of thought. So we found out that Michelle is the showrunner. Head writer, executive. This woman is going to do it all. And it's called, it's a development. Let me clarify this. It's a development deal right now for a new network. Let me say it again, network soap opera. Welcome to the gates. Hold on. I know y'all got excited, right? I'm building this up. Now, you may I say, oh. Yeah, you might say, oh, another soap opera. Again, I want to clarify, network, network, not streaming, because we did get that news, too, this week, too. Another, we got another streaming. But here was the thing that punched everybody in the face. After 16 years. About. Seriously. About 16 years, right? Procter and say. Gamble has reentered the soap business. Yep. Let me repeat for those in the back, Procter and Gamble, <laughs> the home of Tide and all that stuff, Mr. Clean. But most importantly, at the night search for tomorrow, Somerset, Another World, as Walters and Gone Light. 
It's doctors. making its grand return. The doc. Well, no, the doctors was co, um, Colgate Perm, um, uh, uh, Palmolive. Yeah, Palmolive. Yeah. Palm Olive, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Woo! Look, don't do that, man. I was. You see how quick I was on that one. <laughs> um, but that was the surprise that Procter and Gamble, which is now rebranded as P and G Group, will also be um, a part of this partnership. No word. The NAACP and yeah, sure that's it. CBS. No, no, just understand, you know, the, the yeah. weight that is behind. Procter & Gamble has always put quality it, it, production. It, it, their shows were always shows. CBS, I think, truly does have the record for the most successful daytime show productions. And then, <laughs> and then you have the NAACP. Um, okay. I'm I'm blowing on my fingers and 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 buffing them on my shirt. Okay. We so, we're in for some good production here. We are, and I'm going to say this mm-hmm. because I was caught in a in, in a quote unquote social media crossfire regarding this news. Let me explain. First and foremost, shout out to Michelle because if anybody can do this. The resurgence of soap is at your feet, Tani, and we know you you can do it. We there's no questioning it. You take a look at her career, her timeline, uh-huh. all the things that she has accomplished. We mm-hmm. know that she can do it. Okay, all right. The number one thing that everybody for, for me because I was put into this is well, Candace, you should feel a certain type of way considering. <clears throat> Excuse me. That Procter and Gamble bailed out and kind of turned their back on the loyal soap fans who wanted as well turns gone like search another world and stuff like that. Okay, let me address this right now. Do I feel a certain type of way about Procter and Gamble being a part of this? Yes, I do. I'm gonna be honest. Mm-hmm. But I'm not letting that overshadow my happiness. Do you hear how I'm saying this, guys? My happiness that we're right. getting, hopefully, not for wood, a new network soap. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. We've been comfortable for the last couple of years with the four. And I always say this. We are glad, we are proud that these four soaps have all been technically renewed. Next year, Bold and Beautiful will make official, but, you know, they get a sentence. But all the shows are still on the air. Whether you like it, like some of the storylines or not, whatever you do, they're still on, okay? Yep. Um, I feel as though this is a wait and see because, again, it is in development. If it happens, Do we know how far I, in development? Well, they right now are just getting all... Go ahead. You do? Uh-huh. Uh, there are three projected Bibles that are already outlined. Not written, but they are already outlined. There are character development pages that have already been mm-hmm. written. Um, you know, the structure in like th- Yeah, and going in like three different directions. Um, and so, you know, there's choices already on the table. That means... This is this is serious. Um, you know, they will start oh, yeah. thinking about the support staff. Start thinking about you know <laughs> which of these story arcs would make the max you know the maximum impact. So it's this is this is already pre developed. So when they go in, they don't have to they don't have to begin from scratch. They're taking things that she's been working on in her own life for a couple of years. Mhm. Well, so. I'm just saying for I'm just saying like you know, with the Procter and Gamble, you know, as the show, look, we're gonna put it out there. It's gonna be greenlit. It's gonna happen. September twenty five, twenty twenty five. You're gonna see the gates. Welcome to the gates. I do yeah. have questions, but I'm going to wait. I never thought. I mean, here's the thing. Somebody said this, and I'll be honest, it's, it's kind of true. They said out of the three networks, you knew CBS was going to try to to get a new soap. Yep. Look. NBC said, well, let me just say this real quick, Anthony. NBC mm-hmm. made a decision almost two years ago about Days of Our Lives. 
Some may say it was a wrong decision. I will say it saved Dave. Okay? Yeah. Um, with ABC, look, ABC is trying to make General Hospital work. There's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff that's going on, as we speak right now, of them trying to literally yeah. save General Hospital. And, yes, ABC still has the right to all my children and one life to live. Will anything happen from it? We don't know. When it comes to CBS, obviously out of the network, they have the most soaps on their on their network, <laughs> too. But it was always that question is, would they be open to another soap? And if y'all know the Days of Our Lives history, you know what the answer was. I am happy. I am happy this is a network situation. I never thought I would say the words CBS and Procter and Gamble. Me neither. Oh, but I, I never <clears> thought I would. Right, but I'm 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 looking forward to what happens next when we get to that stuff of when people start talking like to the Procter and Gamble people. Y'all know that I'm probably first, right? Because if y'all, because I've been tweeting left and right since how long I've been doing this show? Probably longer before I did this show about. Project Gamble getting back into the industry. So I am I am right. I'm looking forward to this. I already have my fantasy cast list. Um <laughs> you know, like let's go. Let's get let's get excited again. Let's get excited again. And this is a this is a welcome surprise. A welcome surprise. But it is. you know what? A let's go. One. Let's go. Anthony, what you got, baby? You know, so I'm I'm gonna respond to the to the Procter and Gamble thing too. They have a quality history, and and I know all the things, and I have been along for the ride, and I'm not erasing any of them, but nobody else, nobody else was going to step up and do this. So I will take my grievances and file them away and say, make me proud again. You know, show mm-hmm. show me, show me, because I do believe this is is going to happen, and it's going to be amazing. All right, welcome back, David. Um. Let's let's give you the honor. What soap do you want to go to first? Oh, um, well, we let's... Candace had one more piece of news. All right, did we forget oh, something? I did, I did, I did, I yep. did, I did. Yep. Okay, so then that was Wednesday, right? See, this is yep. what happened. About this Wednesday, good Thursday happened, right? Yeah. We're still first of all, the date was trending. By the way, I want to give a shout out to the soap fans. It was trending. It was number one for a couple of hours. Then it went to number five. Then it went back up to number one. So that's the power of soap fans. And by the way, last Wednesday was Jackie Zeman's birthday. Happy heavenly birthday, baby. We miss you. We miss you, girl. Okay. So then on Thursday, some of you guys was probably, like, eating dinner. You probably was chatting. Mm-hmm. Anthony was probably trying to figure out how Greg Vaughn could get back on the show. I was, you know, just, I was I was playing. You see what I did there, right? Okay. Um. So then all of a sudden, I see the Boulevard, BLVD, abbreviation. And I'm like, what's up? And they said, a new streaming soap opera. I was like, say what? Adam Huss, a.k.a. Nicholas Cassidy, when General Hospital wants to bring him back. Jordy Bellison, who, y'all know, he came on the show. And then mm-hmm. you got Vincent Irizarry leading the pack, along with Nicole Tom, the sister of Heather Tom. But you guys know her from the nanny. You guys know her from the nanny. Right. They're all, among others, a part of this show that started production, I believe, today. They started production today. It is about the PR department in Beverly Hills and the red carpet and all the mess behind the scenes. We don't have a, a date when this comes out or if it's going to be on a streaming platform like a Peacock or anything, or if it's going to be, you know, by itself. Let me just say. You just know it's digital. We don't, yeah, we know it's digital. Let me just say this. Last week I felt like saying, and I know you guys wanted to as well, and I'm just going to do it on the show. So all the naysayers, all those who say, the soap genre is dead. There's no point. Cancel all the shows. Who needs new soap operas? I'm here to tell you something. We it's do. It's a famous song. It's a famous song. 
na 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 hey 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 i don't need your opinion na 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 <laughs> hey 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 the soap genre is not dead thank you okay now we can go through stuff <laughs> <laughs> I just, one thing about that, I, I am very much envisioning, and I hope that this is what I think the vehicle is going to be. There are going to be a lot of soap star guest stars playing yes. like the secondary entertainment roles and things. And so we are going to see, we are going to see like major, like, oh my God, look, Susan Lucci's playing whatever, 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 the queen. Um, <laughs> we're going to have cool moments like that. And, and I'm so looking forward to my, it. All right. My favorite person is Kristen Alfonso, like playing like kind of like a, mm-hmm. a snooty, you know, reality star person and Vincent Rosario has to do some PR work for I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah. Yeah, I could feel that. All right, David, what soap do you want to go to first? Um, Let's head to L.A. <laughs> and with Bold and the Beautiful. She Mm -hmm. was supposedly killed And notice Mm -hmm. I have supposedly in quotations Mm -hmm. Um, And Steffi Is crying Mm self-defense And Finn um, While he's not exactly taking it too well I mean he goes back and forth But what do you think I mean right now I I really can't put anything on Finn now. I mean, regardless of the hate, she was a part of his life. She did give him life. Um, of course he's going to feel something and, and tortured. And I don't know. I go back and forth. Do you want to see the Sheila come out of Finn? Oh, sorry. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. Oh, okay, Candace, I gotta go first. I'm sorry, go ahead, go I gotta go, go first on this one. All right, here's the thing. In reality, I would be saying to myself, "Are you out of your mind? You know, she kidnapped, she murdered, and she she she's been dead and come back multiple times. She's been other people. Um, you, you uh, trust me, your life is better off. However, <laughs> as a soap can." I am also going, all right, you're taking too long. Um, you are actually, the build up is not going to be worth it. I mean, it's so better be worth it is actually what I mean. It better be so worth it because, yes, I want to see him go off the rails, and I want to see the Sheila part of him come to the surface. As a soap fan, as a fan of the character, we'll worry about how to redeem him later. Every soap opera does it, you know. So, but unless he is uber super psycho, like really good at you know the dark side, then I might say don't redeem him. But we'll get we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Candace. Yeah. Hi. How you doing? Okay. Here's what I gotta say. <clears throat> I talk to these characters like they're my friends, right? Okay. So let me let me hold Steffi's hand while she's crying and trembling. Steffi, you do realize. First and foremost, you poke the bear by going to her restaurant, well, her place of business. Okay. I agree. Two, I understand you're suffering from PTSD. I get it, but you took it too far with this. Yeah. You, yeah. you killed a woman who there's a double there's a double edge here. Sheila freaking Carter for over thirty years has tortured the force of family. Whether it was your grandma, your grandfather, your father, your step siblings, and you. Okay? On the flip side though, that is your husband's biological mother that he listen to listen to me, Sassy, that he gave up the chance to know who she is for you. He chose you over getting to know his biological son. And sin has always, in my mind, kind of felt as though, like a little regretful, that he 
did not have that opportunity to get to know why did Sheila give him up? Do I have any siblings? Do I have any crazy diseases or mental health issues? You see how this is working out? Mm-hmm. So, Stephanie, you can't always be all, be completely mad at Finn. And audience people, listen, I get what you guys are saying, that Lee is his mother. Yes, she raised him. You're absolutely right. But the fact is, is that when a, a adopted kid finds their biological family, they want to know certain things. And sadly now, Finn won't get he that opportunity. He doesn't get that opportunity. So, right. So he's in shock because, one, Steffi, you literally stabbed this woman, okay? Finn can't get that out of his, like, he can't get that, that out of his mind. Is that the woman he loves killed a woman that he he will never get the answers to. Now, when it comes down to this, I've been saying on this Sarah show for the longest time, Finn is a little cuckoo. It's just, yes. there's, a, there's a couple of things that I think, this, and this is, the, look, it happens, because it happens over on General Hospital with a certain character, too. We forget that Finn had a storyline, but they dropped it because, here's the thing, Weren't we all glad that Finn took um, Steffi away from that triangle of hope, Liam, Liam and um? Wasn't we glad mm-hmm. that he had a breath of fresh air? There you go. That's why you yep, yes. got some of this stuff. I bet y'all forgot that he had a relationship before Steffi that he was talking about, and we dropped that. I want to know what happened to that girl, to be honest with you. I always wanted to know. Also, mm-hmm. let's not forget. Let's not forget. Finn has a temper. He, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He, Look what he did to his best friend. Right. Well, not only that, but no. Not no, his best no, friend, but that was Thomas's Thomas 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 best, Thomas best friend. That was Thomas' best friend. They had the fraternity. Mm-hmm. But we also kept questioning, did Finn switch the fraternity? Because isn't that something Sheila Carter would do? I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Always, and not only mm-hmm. that, but he can't stand, he can't stand Liam. And for re- real good reasons, too. And Liam, you better watch yourself. Because I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing, and, but I got to give a shout-out to Scott Clifton because you're doing it right, though. I like the little fly moments that you, got, that you and Tanner be playing off of. But, Steffi, back to you, honey. This is not the first time you kind of killed somebody. Uh-huh. Um, so I'm going to need for you to understand where Finn is coming from. You and Finn both do need each other right now. And, Liam, I need you to stay out of it because I see what you're trying to do when you went over there to Finn and say, your wife needs you. Your wife, Liam, if this was you on a hot day and they were telling you about Hope and Hope did this, you wouldn't do all this, okay? I'm just saying, all right? But right now, the question is, do I want Finn to be a little Sheila? I want him to be Norman Bates and Psycho. Let's go. We need some juice. We need some yes. juice, okay? And, I and I'm so sorry, I have to interject here and say, you almost gave it to us with um Ashley Alley Alley. See, that's how forgettable it actually became. You built it up. You dangled it. We was ready to go for her to go full on cycle and said you threw her off the balcony oh, and Allie. that was it. Yeah. Mm. Ah, this, we have, we have a character right now that everyone's invested in that has the chops to play it, that you already wrote it into the backstory, let's go. I'm pouring the gas line, and I'm about to light the match. Let's flame that right on in to flame out Sheila Carter crazy. Mm-hmm. Benny, any thoughts, man? Benny, you there? Yeah, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm here. I'm just I'm kind of taking it all in. Honestly, I've been so far behind on my soaps lately that – this is, uh, I- I'm just listening. Like, the last thing I saw was the episode where Sheila was killed, um, and maybe okay. the episode after that. Um, but the only two, uh, the only two soaps that I've really kept up with, uh, since I started my new job were our General Hospital and, and Days. So I'm okay. still working my way through. All right, let, let's, um, Candace, anything else about Days you wanna, you wanna shout out about? Cause, about, you know, about we're both. Old. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bold, say I'm this. Oh my God! Yes, bold. It's okay. Hey, look, it, it, look, it's all the same. 
Um, I will say this. I'm invested in the Sheila, because I know, honestly, I'm going to say this. I don't think, obviously, I don't think she's dead. Because here's the thing. Shout out to Sean Kanan. Babe, Sean. Here's the thing. Yeah. When they was in the morgue, you know what I kept screaming when she was in the morgue? I was like, suck the toes. Suck the toes. Because yep. half of me is thinking, this is sugar. I think yep. this is sugar, mm. y'all. Because me too. Here's, here's, uh-huh. here's the deal. When you take a look at it, right, Sheila just walked in. When have you ever known Sheila to just walk in without sneaking in or doing something to retaliate? Just seeing you, nothing. But then again, I was like, wait a minute, hold up, Candace. Candace, baby. You know darn good well this could be Sheila playing. Like, either way, I don't think she's dead. But I can totally see this. I don't this, think this so scene. either. Right. Well, I mean, here's, okay, look. Rolling the beautiful. You do this all the time. And I love when folks do this, when they fake you out. Because take a look at what they did with Tanner. They yep. took him off the credit. They was like, goodbye, Tanner. Oh, they did. Season. Yeah. And next thing you know, cliffhanger, he alive. Okay, look, 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 I'm just going to jump right in and say, listen, both, we, we all know you're playing, and we'll ride it out. Don't yeah. drag it out for too long. Yeah. Um, d- don't drag it out for too long. We forgive you already because we all know Sheila ain't dead. I was saying it was Sugar from the very beginning. Um, well, here's the thing. Don't you feel as though, don't you think, though, in all honesty, let's, let's, let's put, let, you know, Vinny, include, include your something in this the okay. fact is, is that Sheila, she got poked. They, they, you know, she tried to live a nice life, her and Deacon. Deacon was taming her. But mm-hmm. Steffi yeah. kept poking and poking and poking. And we know what happens when we poke a dog or a bee or something like that. We get hurt. They right? bite okay. back. They bite back. Yeah. So the thing is, is that Sheila is not an easy priest. No, she, when you poke her, she is going to get back at you. And the thing is, I said to myself, Candace, baby, you know that Sheila will go off the deep end to get back at Steffi. What is the ultimate punishment that Sheila could do to Steffi that could make her lose spin in the process? There you go, folks. No, no, no. Here's the thing. That's exactly that. What is the ultimate kill you Steffi revenge? Take her husband away by making you the supposed murder. Oh, no. so, Anthony, mm-hmm. wait, Anthony, go down, go down a little bit further. Take mm-hmm. everything, from, take everything from Stephanie, including the child. Yep. I'm here. You know what? Okay, hey, so no, I've got. I'm here. I've got a question yep. for you guys. Not to cut you off. Um, no, go ahead. But I was. I was reading, I actually found this uh, article, I think it had to be on Twix or um, Facebook or something, but just about the whole Sheila death, uh, allegedly there was somebody who um, had plastic surgery to look exactly like Sheila. Yeah, that's her name sure. was Sugar. That's Sugar. That's, that's Sugar. sugar. Uh-huh. That's the sugar. So is it possible that that's the person that died and she oh. was still alive? That's what we think. Oh, yeah. That's, that's our that's theory. That's the theory. That's, Mind you, mm-hmm. the original Sugar was played by the original um, Heather, Heather Weber. Weber. Yeah. And it was such a great character. I love yep, She was a warden. Oh, I loved her. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so let's jump on over to Genoa City then so we can get the ones that Vinny is not current on out of the way and get to the two that we think we probably have some complaints okay. about. I didn't see today's. Um, so, Candace, this is your show. Oh, wait, you know that, girl. Okay, so hi. How y'all doing? So mm-hmm. let's get let's get to brass and pass here. Okay, so real quick, everybody. There was a decision that was made between Cricket and Phyllis. Danny chose Cricket. Much to dismay of Phyllis, who kind of made a fool of herself, but did 
But did she really? Because Danny, you kind of was playing her. So mm-hmm. here's what happened. So Phyllis decided to run out society, right? She was all like, yeah, I got a hot date. And, I'm, and Abby, you know what? They need to really use Melissa Orway more. Like, you know, right. I'm not just oh, saying. Yeah. Now, I'm not just saying for, like, the little tit-tats and stuff, because like, I thought it was funny. But Abby was like, so nobody else, you know, everybody else turned you down. So Phyllis was like, I need to be here. Thank you very much. Okay. Meanwhile, it's nice to have your friends because we had Nina. That is, we need Nina back on full time, by the way. I'm just saying. Um, so she's talking to Cricket, and she pretty much says, I don't need to hear about Phyllis every single time I'm here. Why did you let Phyllis get to you for you to stoop down to her level? And Cricket is all like, you know what? Yeah, she did. Okay. So then Danny comes and everything, and Cricket and Danny have this conversation. And Cricket called Danny out, and Danny called Cricket out for, you know, just to come into Phyllis, right? So then Phyllis goes ahead and she texts um, um, Danny, hey, baby, meet me at 10 o'clock. So Danny was like, huh? And, and Cricket was like, that was Phyllis. And he was like, yeah. And then that's when they showed up to society. Like, Phyllis was all excited to see Danny. She even daydreamed about this, right? And her face yeah. looked it so, you know, smut when, you know, Cricket showed up. And Danny chose Cricket, and Phyllis started crying. But don't worry, because, you know, I'm pretty sure she's got somebody else in, on her line. Okay, let me just say this real quick. After thinking about it, I do feel sorry for Phyllis, too. Me, too. Be- because, all right, here's the deal. So far, if you're joining, you know, joining the, the you know, she tried to get back with Jack, right? Because that's right. familiar territory. With Danny, Danny is always going to be the one that kind of enjoys the attention, even though he says he does it. He really does enjoy the attention of, because he's a rock star. Yeah. You know, when you're a rock star, it's like you got all these groupies and everybody wants a piece of you and fantasizing about you. Okay, Danny, honey, honey, I'm going to go you so much simpler than that. And yes, all of that it. plays into it, but it's just him because there is the moment where you say, girl, give it up. Or, I, you know, never going to happen or you're like a sister to me. But there are so many ways to go with it, but you can shut it down. No, do that. not feel... Wait a minute, yeah. wait a minute but, but here's the thing about Danny. Danny did entertain it because, first and foremost, you're saying, you're, you know, the, the muse and playing music for her, too, and then saying, you know, we're friends, we're co-parents, I will always care about you. When you're in that state of mind as Phyllis, now think about Phyllis's mindset, okay? She's been in birth, not once, not twice, but five times. Her children don't even really want to be around her, right? She made full, like, Jack, who's her loyal confidant, like, he doesn't even want to talk to her, right? Right now what we're seeing is Phyllis at her lowest. Before she no, 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 we're her. seeing Phyllis. At her desperation. Well, that's what and, I'm saying. We're seeing at her. When I say that's because, well, Anthony, you, you, you know what happens, right? Next, right? Of course, uh, right? Uh, I, uh, right. Uh, that's why I said she, she, she's at This is lowest. just a reboot, honey. This is the reboot. Right. I mean, this is a reboot because I'm, I'm going to say this. Hey, Josh, Josh, Jelby, Jelby, you have an anniversary episode for Michelle Stafford, don't you? Because I'm seeing what this is going to be. I can totally see the episode in my head. You are stealing my thunder again. But go yeah, ahead, girl. I, I know. You know. Well, you know, for, for, for my own thing of life. Because my whole thing is, is that you got shot down by Jack. You will always be tied to that history of Sharon and Nick and Danny and Cricket. You have had so many other fillers, baby. Don't go backwards. You go forward, and I know, sadly, when you went forward, all the guys that you was with either ended up as crook, dead, or left town. <clears throat> Cure Jeff Francis, Branson, come back as Roman. Thank you. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. Because I'm just saying. So to me, uh-huh. it's like, Phyllis, you learned the lesson, honey. You, you, like you said, you know, in, in an episode, 
You want to show your children that you are better than this. I'm here to tell you, Phyllis, you are better than this. Instead of going backwards, like, why would, that's my question. Why would you even want to do that to yourself with Danny? No offense to Danny. Mm-hmm. But why that's would my you, question. Like, okay, like, all right, let's be real. All right, right but um, hold up, hold up. I'm going to defend a little bit, though, because there is also the element of the unexpected life happenings that happened around all of this with her and Jack. You know, her, I'm sorry, Danny led her on. Not, not, not. It, let's not okay. dance around it. You know, it, it wasn't, it wasn't subtle. Um, you know, he was playing the game with her. So, I, 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 I think I see where they're going with this. Where, where they're gonna strip, you know, Phyllis of everything, and is she gonna go crazy, or is she gonna go? You know, I'm not needed on this planet anymore. Uh, you know, and they're going to tie it into the big anniversary. I, I kind of see where they're going with it, but I, I also kind of want to complain just a little bit because a couple of years ago, you know, the Phyllis had learned a lot from everything she had been through. And she was really in that place where she exuded that she had learned from all, she was finally accepting the lessons that she learned really. She was finally acknowledging and accepting them. And now we're back here. With, so please make this, please make this something that, you know, ends up taking her to the really next, next level. Give her that Carly Spencer, you know, makeover. I don't know. Maybe Jacksonville is the key. Send her on a trip to Jacksonville so she can come back, you know, eat, pray, love Julia Roberts, Phyllis, Michelle Stafford. Um, that's what I'm going to ask of you of this because we've already done this with this we just, character. We just, with that's this character. character. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, Jel- that's what I'm talking to Jelby. Jelby Shelby. Okay, Jelby. Okay, Deb, how you doing, Shelby? The problem is that you're stuck on when you were still there versus now. Because when we get to the other stories, I'm noticing a pattern. I did notice a pattern. And then you have one story that is my go-to. And by the way, I did see, I actually saw some clips on you, on uh, Twitter about tomorrow's episode. And my God, I'm going to say this right now. Do it, girl. I'm right there with I'm you. Saying, I, I'm like, no! Okay. All right. So let me get to the next one. So the next story. Okay. Okay. So now we have, okay. I'm going to say I'm borderline with this. No, actually, I'm okay with this. But I know that they could go harder. Connor. Connor has posted. Thank it. you. Yep. Okay. Now, <clears throat> that this is in your ballpark, this, Candace. This, this actually really is. As a child care profession, professional, I understand that children, especially, and let me say this now, for those parents who are listening to our show who's had kids, from 2020 on up, okay, you know that the world has changed as far as the structure of these kids. These are not the kids before 2020. You got, you guys understand what I'm saying, right? Yeah. There was something nope. that changed. And you take a look at Connor. Connor has suffered a lot in his life, like Adam was saying. But also, when you're a child and you experience trauma, at any age, but usually it's around the core. At, why do I really feel like I'm at my job right now? At the core, <laughs> at the core of a young child's mind, when trauma is back to back to back to back, it does develop into something. Whether it's uh, uh, closing in feelings and unleashing them later on in life, or there is a psychological like something. I forgot to con- my job better not be listening to this. Where they, disassociation, disassociation right, disassociation happens a lot. Discontinuous and and the, the the disconnection of reality. So <laughs> so, Chelsea, Adam, and Billy all came to Connor's session. Now here's the deal: 
Adam and Chelsea, yes. Billy, baby, no. Uh uh. Yup. I felt the same way. And I like the fact that Adam said, so are you here just to impress Chelsea? So meanwhile, in the session, the you know, Chelsea, I said this too. Chelsea did something that we all do when we go to a doctor's office. And if you say you don't do it, you know you do. You, you know you're lying. Like that, right. You know you look be, you be looking or trying to figure out how valued they are. Like, okay, so how long have you been doing this? Oh, 13 years? Okay, okay, great. And you like looking around the scene trying to find a certificate or something to say how good of a doctor they are. That's all of us. What do you look? Am I like, really? Seriously? Okay. So Chelsea was like looking at the doctor. It's like, you have nothing to worry about. I, I've been doing this for 31 years. I'm a professional. So Connor explained that when he washes his hands, he has to get all the germs off his hands, including yep. when it starts to get red. Y'all know what he was doing, right? Okay. Burning he, Well, no. When you're scrubbing it, really, when you scrub your hands, you start to bleed. Yeah, you're, right. you're burning because, the skin off yeah. from all that friction, yeah. uh-huh. all the chemicals. So, right. Uh huh. Because yeah. he was trying, Because when he said he was trying to get all the germs off, I'm like, oh lord. Then he said he has these thoughts. And when the doctor said what kind of thoughts, Connor looked away, and that's when I was like, baby's been thinking about hurting himself. Bomb, 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 bomb. Uh huh. Then, then he was like saying, you know. It's scary thought, and you can see Chelsea really concerned because Chelsea realized this is a stem of her, right? Okay. So then Connor says there's times where he's thinking about if something happens to mom and dad, he's not going to be able to get to them in time. That moment hit me hard as I don't know what. So that broke on, me. Before, yeah. That so broke me. Chelsea, yeah, so Chelsea is like, she's so conflicted because, again, she's just saying, and I'm, go- I'm going to finish this, this recap real quick because then I'm going to hit the show for some truth here. She kept saying, is this her fault? Is this because of what she did? Is it because of Adam? Meanwhile, outside, Adam and Billy are really swapping stories about their mental health. Adam was talking about how he, you know, is he was actually okay with the story about him you know, what he did with that guy that was totally not true, but okay. And saying, you know, all this stuff. Billy was talking about his mental, you know, disorder and stuff like that. Then the reason that Billy was there is because of Johnny, because if whatever Connor is going through, he wants to, you know, see, you know, how this is going to affect Johnny. Yeah, okay, Josh. So then, you know, afterwards, they found out that Connor has OCD and there's no cure, and Adam is kind of upset about it because, you know, you know, he, he feels so Connor. Everything. Yeah, he wants to fix it, just like every parent. When you get something like that, you want to fix it. You, you're trying to figure out what the heck can I do. Let me just, okay. <clears throat> Josh and them. Josh, Amanda, writers of Young and Russell. I know you guys are working with somebody um, regarding this. But I need for you to listen to somebody who want who first, first and foremost has gone through this personally. I'll share this story. Kind of. So some of you guys may or may not know that I my mom passed when I was 11 years old, and as an 11 year old, I remember just shutting down, and then I became really like okay, I need to know where A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and my family is at because I want to make sure that I can get to them before something happens to them. It it consumes mm-hmm. me. When it comes down to cleaning, look, before COVID was a thing, I was double cleaning and everything else like that. Um, Because you want to get all the germs. It's, it's, I'm not saying that it's, a, that it's something bad. You know, look, I, I save money cleaning. No. But the thing it's, is that it's, with, high, it's a higher alertness right, and awareness higher alert, it's, than what's and a, normal and comfortable. Right. And you know right. me. I've always said I am not normal. Y'all all know this. I am not normal because I think normal is boring. So when I saw this storyline, I'm like, okay, we're telling the story. 
we're using a child. I need for this to go hard. Then I need it for yeah. Right now. Yeah. Because the thing is, is that I don't. Okay. Yes. Do parents feel as though they have to? Do All right, blame Candace. Blame? Candace, I'm going to jump in for a second. Right. Go Think ahead. about it this way. Okay. This is the child of two parents who on a yearly basis are going through some major emotional crisis. Oh, yeah. Who, who have been dead and come back, um, who have been involved with who people that were dead themselves. and come back. Who um, tried to kill, themse- kill themselves, the family yeah. torture. Like, this child, yeah. this child has experienced, we don't see it because there's only so much they can show on camera. And so we might get a couple of flashbacks. That'd be kind of cool. I'm hoping, I'm really hoping for this storyline. Um, and, and I don't know the, the kid's, the actor's name. I'm so sorry for that. I should. Yeah. But I think he's doing a really Judah. good job. What, what is it? I think Judah it's, Mackey. It's, yeah, okay. Judah, Judah is I'm doing, not... let me just finish the point. Judah's doing a really good job. And you have... You have the ability and the the soap tools at your discretion to actually make this an incredible storyline. You can go back and film flashbacks and things. You can employ, you know, um, delusions at some point. There are a lot of ways you can go with this. And then you can tie it into a reality situation that is in the world that children are experiencing, you know, mental health challenges because of going through COVID and, and the political environment we're in. And then top on all of it, the stuff that he's been through, y'all, you, y'all can go a little psycho and then bring it all back. Use this as a little bit of public service announcement. Give some incredible performances to all the actors that are going to be involved in a storyline like that. Plus this, this kid who's, he's, he's showing you, he's got the chops he can play. So play, 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 play. Candace, thank you. You're welcome. The thank problem you, is Candace. that I'm going to say, you're welcome. Here's the problem that I'm having. Young and the Russell's General Hospital Day is bold. Listen up. When you do these kind of storylines, you need to go through it and not halfway through it. Because my thing is, this technically is your other second big story, if you go there. Because here's the thing. Connor is a product of two, two people who have gone through it and hasn't really dealt with it. Chelsea almost literally killed herself. That does something to a child. Oh, yeah. This child has so many different biological parents, like different siblings and stuff like that. That that does something to you. And then you got Adam. (laughs) Thank you. Like, you you got Adam and everything like that. To me, yeah, you can do the public service announcements. That's fine. I like when you guys do that. But... Please go there with this. And you know what? I'm going to say this right now, too. Hey, National Arts and Science and Television. Next year, I better see you guys revote and reopen the Younger Performer category. Thank you. Because to me, I'm going to tell you something right now. On all the shows, I'm seeing some young people get that deserve something. But with on every one, single one, yep. Yeah, I feel as though, like, Josh and them, don't be 50% with this storyline. Look, William J. Bell wanted me to personally tell you this, because, you know, I, I can channel him. Don't be afraid to break the door down. Because if people yep. try to stop you from breaking the door down, it's because they know that it's going to be replaced. And, it's, and when I say replaced, it means dumb. Okay, not, you know, it's okay to do these kind of storylines. That's why we're so invested because it's like, oh, my God, Connor, like, baby, oh, my God. Because now you're worried. You're now worried that something, we got to keep a watch on him. We're invested in him because he's right. He's a major product of of so many major storylines. Even though he wasn't actually playing in them, but you know we're invested in him because he's that character, and now that character is becoming Robin from General Hospital, where he's getting that kind of storyline that will make us care about him. As the mm-hmm. character, not what he represents to all of us in the various soap storylines that he's, you know, tangentially been a part of. All and, right. and, 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 okay, 
So now the big story. The story Guys, uh, that um, we're going to give them the Kim Zimmer Award. And if mm, you know mm-hmm. the joke behind that, then mm-hmm. you get it. Mm-hmm. This week on the Young and the Rustle, the dark side of Young and the Rustle. Jordan Bring it, girl. Was go for playing it. Steph. Steph mm. put two and two together and realized that Jordan was using him to get to Nikki. Nikki was still hiding her drinking. She was hiding drinks under the couch, y'all. Under <laughs> the couch. Get your hammock. Under the couch and in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't doing a good job of finding where these drinks are. So Jordan comes and everything, and Steph is like, "I know what you did. You have to be some. You have to be a strong woman to get a, a recovered alcoholic to drink again." I and I didn't mean that as a joke, but in all honesty, he was recovered. He was a you know he was a, he was a a like he now he's drinking because of this woman. So Steph was like. I'm going to tell Nikki. I'm going to tell Nikki what happened. George, Steph got up. And this is where I was like, no, no, something's about to go down. Yep. Steph, Steph gets ready. He's like, you know, because he's a little drunk. Yeah. He's taking that deep breath. Jordan pushed push him in front of a moving car. Steph did. He did. Steph is gone. <laughs> Steph is gone. I had some hopes for him. And we all, we I didn't all think- did. We all did. But we knew he was going to be a casualty. We we just didn't know it was going to be this soon. So Nikki blamed herself. Yeah. Oh, honey, I did. But go ahead. I, I, I mean. Right. So I, Nikki, yeah. Nikki, Nikki blamed herself. Then Jordan calls Claire. Claire's over at Victoria's house, you know, because Victoria's like, this is my daughter, Claire Newman. Yeah, she called. Yeah, we, we sorry, call. We know we know who she got his. Well, she Claire Newman. Anyway, so this is like, well, I'd be dumb. Okay, you know the media's going to eat this all up. And Victoria's like, but she's my happy baby girl. Like, I just love her so much. So she didn't really say it like that. But y'all know that's Victoria, right? Okay. So then all of a sudden, like, there's a plan to kind of flush out Jordan. Well, Jordan, who has her Sheila Carter wig collection, seriously, she got wings with Dave. She got Dave Isabella. I love it. I love she got the uh-huh. Isabella. She got yep. the, what was Sheila's what was Sheila's name on um when she was when she had the red hair on Bolt few months ago. Oh jeez, I forgot. Oh god. Oh, uh, uh, oh. no. Uh, I'm just gonna girl. call her Mary. I'm just gonna call her Mary. I don't know where Mary came from, but Mary. She had the Mary wig, the Isabella wig. What's that? If she has a Barbara Ryan wig, I'm done. But they or the Lucinda Wall. If she no no no, she's got to pull no. out the Mary Tyler Moore. No, wait a minute. She was blonde. Hold up. She had the okay. Wait a minute. She had a blonde, a red. Then she, mm. you know what? She had the she had the Reba Shane mid eighties wig. The Isabella. The, you know what? Go ahead. You go ahead. Tell me anything. Do you say anyway? So Claire Front gets a call from Jordan, and 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 Claire is like. I'm staying with Victoria. And Jordan was like, you better not trust those members. you only supposed to trust me. And then Claire was like, goodbye. And then Claire pumped information. She wanted to know some information about Nikki and Victor. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend something in a minute. So then Jordan sees a red can. She lifts it up. She smells it. She smiles. Then next thing you know, Victoria gets a phone yep. call. Burning down the house. Burning down the house. She finds out the house is being burned, is burned down to a crisp. Victoria, it's the father knows best house that her and Billy got married in. He, he got on that. And so that's when Victor's like this. Okay, we're about to take Jordan down. We're about to take Jordan down. Because I think Jordan thought Claire was at that house to teach her a lesson and stuff. But meanwhile, Claire, she's pumping Nikki saying, so how do you and Victor meet? And I'm going to say this. Young and Russell, you were smart for doing this. As you guys know, Eric and Melanie just recently celebrated anniversaries on their show. They included a clip from 1982 um, 
where it was like, oh, you know, them talking about money. That was their way of doing a little tribute. Don't worry, you're going to get a tribute for Nectar soon, okay? But I was like, oh, that's kind of cute. But, yeah, um, yeah, Jordan burned down the house. And I'm just going to say this. I still don't trust Claire. What do you guys mm. think about Jordan and her misdeeds? Uh, Anthony, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going to let Anthony go first because I know he's just waiting. Okay. So I have been waiting. You know, when we talked about this back in the fall, we said, you know, they got it. They got her. Huh? You know, <laughs> they got it. I will say um, if some of it is – it's not that it's hard to swap. I, I, I'm, I'm letting go of, of things that would annoy me because I'm not looking for perfection anymore. I'm looking right. for, you know, good quality, and I'm looking for – Use what use what you got to the best advantage, and don't let us down. So, um, Jordan, I am I am so very happy on that side of it, and, and I let go of the other little things that annoy me. Claire, oh honey, oh honey, mm-hmm. I, um, you know, you know, that's an Esme. Um, you know, they, they, there are two personalities inside that girl, and every once in a blue moon, she ever see the little side look she does, and Ooh. I can't really, see, I can't really see. But my sister, you know, bit. who is a diehard Young and the Restless fan, she, you know, I, I did the magnification, and I had my little device, and I'm all up against the screen, and and I saw it, and I said, okay, she does that every once in a while. My sister's like, yeah, so. Okay, there are two personalities in that girl. We only know one right now. If you're doing that, Young and the Restless, kudos. I am so on board. Benny, um, you, I don't know if you have any. I honestly, I, I honestly don't. <laughs> I'm just All right. Young. Well, I have, I it don't. is your turn anyway. You are our Dave okay. man. So catch us up. What's been going on in Dave? In Salem. Um. Well, let me. First off, let me go ahead and say that I absolutely love the scenes of Leo Stark babysitting Jude. Um, oh, me too. I thought me too. they were uh-huh. absolutely hilarious. Me I too. wanted to send a video of it to my son because that's exactly how my son would be when he's babysitting my niece, uh, but I couldn't. Um, but, no, uh, I have to say it was absolutely I'm, – I'm enjoying the writing. I'm glad that – um, Holly woke up, and they're kind of foreshadowing her not being honest to, you know, EJ about Kate not being the one to give her the drugs. Even though she did say, she did tell Nicole that um, Kate, they weren't Kate's drugs, she didn't own up to the fact that they were hers. Um, so that still leaves Kate in, you know, the halfway house. Um I haven't watched today's episode yet, so um, I'm not exactly sure what's going on with today's episode. Um, I liked it. I don't know. I thought it was kind of kind of crazy having Ava team up with Black Patch to break Clyde out of out of prison and using yeah. her, you know, her her family her, her mob family ties um, to to help out with it. And then turning on black. Cat. Wait, hold up one second though. I will say this: kudos for finally mentioning that Days of Our Lives. I mean, it has been like what three years now. She's never even made a phone call in all the situations she's in. Go on. Right. Yeah, like well, I mean, you know, the fact is, I don't know the history of Days whether she's actually, you know, had mob ties in the past. Oh so, yeah. Yeah, no, Vinny, she was the lady boss, and she was the boss. Oh, okay. No, 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 she, yeah. Yeah, no, 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 she royalty. Okay, so then, yeah, how the hell did she get out of the lifestyle? Like, you would think that, at least from what we know of, what we know from General Hospital, you could never leave the, you could never leave the no, without having a target on your back. We would need an hour and a half just to tell you about all that mess. Um, oh, <laughs> some of it was good and juicy, though, but... Yeah. All right, go on, Vinny. I'm um, sorry, but I had to interrupt there and just give our audience what they were waiting to hear. Go ahead. Yeah, no worries. Um, 
I, I'm anxious to see what happens with Paulina. Um, I, I don't. I I'm not somebody that has inside information on whether you know her contract is ending and they're gonna you know kill the character off, um, or the fact that you know because we know that Harris is leaving, you know she's gonna get his heart and make a recovery. Um, I don't know. I I'm just I'm anxious to see how that goes, and and where episode, where that story is heading. Oh, that's today's episode. Okay. You'll find out. Um, I'll, okay. Um, let's see. Then we also have. Um, uh, da, 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 I'm just trying to think through. Um, oh, um, I like. I liked seeing Lucas dress up as the fire, the, the the firefighter to get into the Horton house to help them clean up. Um, you know, because <laughs> clearly he's not keeping it quiet that so he's out of prison for right now in the safe house. Um, so he he'll do what he can to kind of be out of the apartment or, you know, um, out of. I guess he's staying at Kate and Roman's. Or no, he's staying in a monastery. That's right. Um, so she was able to sneak out. Um, you know, I don't know. And that, that's a weird situation for me because, you know, fires happen all the time, but the ornaments weren't touched in the fire. Um, the chair itself wasn't touched in the fire. Um, that, I don't know, I thought that was kind of lazy on, on the writer's end. Um, usually if it's a, if it's going to be a fire and the guy that set the fire poured gas everywhere. So how is that um, chair not burned up? Um, but I guess it's a big deal. Um, let's see. Oh, I don't so, know. Maybe, uh, um, what do they call? Um, God, David. Um, divine intervention. <laughs> yeah. That's why the chair... <laughs> <laughs> That's maybe, why the maybe uh, Eric prayed extra hard. Uh, uh, all right, yeah. I, I got some thoughts, but I know Candace. I, I know Candace got some thoughts too. So, honey, 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 school him and and and, and let's talk. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Um. Okay. <clears throat> so we're talking about this Horton thing, this Horton House fire. This, what, where were we at here? Okay. <sighs> All right, so real, real quick, let me go back to something about Ava real quick. Let me, let me go back because this, this is a sore subject with me, and I'm going to put blame on some people. So, Vinny, the reason about that you probably don't know about Ava is, is the thing that everybody does. That, well, not you, but the writers. They drop those important information when it fits their agenda. Mm-hmm. Um, because Ava is that girl. Ava... Ava, look, check this out. Ava made Kayla scared, okay? Mm-hmm. She even made Pat scared. Mm-hmm. To the point where, look, let's keep it 100. Ava would make the other Ava cry a river. Oh, uh-huh. Is, uh, yes, yes. Ava is, that's Ava. Ava is more of a boss. And, e- and, Ava, and Ava would have picked up two glasses. And a good bottle of red, and she would pop it open, pour two glasses, and hand one to Sheila Carter and say, girl, let me tell you. And Sheila would say, no, girl, let me tell you. Go ahead. Yeah. They, they, would, they would be on the same level. I feel as though this is, the, this is an issue that the writers have had for a while. And we've got to remember there's two different writers. You know, like, obviously, we're still in this, you know, with Sherry Anderson, Ron, um, Ron's stuff will come back later later in May. Okay. Then you have the the the, the Lucas thing. You know what? I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna do it. Because I would say this, considering all that was going on, I needed I needed Lucas. I like the fact that Lucas did get out to reminisce. Dave, y'all don't know what to do with Lucas, do you? No, no, honey, Wait. they don't. I, at least they're giving him a little bit of comedy thrown in because he does. Right. Brian does. Brian does that so well. Yeah, but honey, they have no. But, 
they don't have anything for no idea for what to do with him. Because and I have ideas. Have, oh, I have ideas too. But yeah. <laughs> um. Okay, so are we we're talking about the fire too, right? Yeah, please talk about the fire, girl. Please. Okay. Yep. Go ahead. This is the equivalent. Okay, so when this happened. All kinds of things went through my head. When they burned down the Newman Ranch, when they redid Catherine Chance's place, when on Bowling the Beautiful they stopped doing real fashion shows, when on General Hospital it was become, it was General Hospital. Everything changed. And the thing is about Days of Our Lives is the Horton House literally is a part of the show. It is seriously a character of the show. Yep. We've seen that we've seen the growth of that house since day one. And for yeah, it to yes. burn down, again, this is just like a, if this was handled right, this would have been sweet. This was, would have been an emotional, you know, March, February to remember. Thank you. And, okay. Good. Yeah. And the thing is, is that, okay, now we're rebuilding. I took it two ways. I don't know how you guys took it, but I took it two different ways. One, I was thinking about when they, when they filmed us, right? Because we got to do a reality mm-hmm. check, right? So I was like, okay, around this time is when some stuff was happening. I said, okay, the fire is one chapter. Revenge. Closes. Well, no, no, I looked at it two different ways. Because I did think about that too. But I looked at it as it's a chapter that is closed and another new beginning. I'm- I'm going to stop you right there, Candace, because I feel you, and I thought about that, too. But here's the thing. If that came from the new uh, set, uh, then we would have been given the honor and the respect that it deserved. Right. I think it was but revenge, said, and they'd have to scramble to fix it. Well, that's what I said. That's why I said, the behind-the-scenes stuff. Because, look, I can really mm-hmm. say what I really want to say, but I'm going to be respectful. You see what I'm saying? I'm being respectful right. for people. Because I don't. Because if I say what I what, what I really think that was about, then I might get in trouble. I'm gonna be honest. I, you know. Uh, so all right. Yeah, I was being a little Brooklyn. I'm calling. I'm I'm calling it T-I-Z, I I see it. Right. So I looked at it like that. So we're doing a rebirth, a rebuild. All right. I'm so I'm so glad. First of all, it, okay. This is where the emotions come in. Bill Hayes. Mhm. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Doug and Julie are, I mean, in all honesty, Doug and Julie are now the Thomas and Alice of yep. this generation. Of this generation, you see what I'm saying? Yep. For them to go ahead and give us the history lessons and stuff like that, and then when they were yep. talking about the ornaments, and I was like, now see, that is going to be the thing that's going to hurt, is if that all the ornaments, the collection of the ornaments is destroyed. And for it to not have been destroyed, yeah. I was like, okay, yeah, that was a choice and a right choice that they made. Um, however, because of everything, I, I still don't know if Jack and Jennifer knows about what happened. Um, I don't know if some other Hortons knew about it that they could have popped in and be like, hey. You know, they could have. We got Eli. We got Eli. Eli's a Horton, so, you know, that, you know, that's how. But he hasn't know, been there yet. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Look, this is my bone to pick with all soap operas, but I, you know, I can highlight it right here. You can, you employed it during the pandemic. You can write a cute little check and say, "Hey, could you sit at your desk and do a quick little Zoom with people?" Um, and we go film it so that you know, um, you know. Uh, hmm. Let me think of someone very impactful. Ah, uh, Jennifer Horton, Christian mm-hmm. Alfonso. You know, you can bring us into the real world and say, yo, no, hey, we're going to do a little Zoom and all kind of have a therapy session and, 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 and talk about what happened. Sorry, I, I just had to throw that in there. That's okay. But, but you, know that, that, you know that choice was off the table because of certain – you know that certain people. I'm just saying that certain people made those decisions. Uh, but neither, nonetheless, yeah. the Horton House burning down and the stories. And real quick, 
Shout out to the young actors who played Tom and Alice Horton because seriously, y'all did that. I gotta give you props yeah. for that. They did that. Yeah, that was that um, was nice. That was like right. um almost, you know, just like a throwback when they did Young John Abbott and Young Dina. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, so I mean, I I'm I'm here for it for the rebuild of the Hortons because I'm also like, okay, this is the rebuild of days. I hope you're right, Candace. I, I there's another path this could be, and I'm a little afraid of that. I don't know. Yeah. All right, um, David. Anything else going on on days that you want to highlight? Um, I think we touched on everything except for maybe uh, Stephanie and Everett, and oh, I was. I'm with you. We Candace. talked about this. Um, I remember hearing something about he brought up his father. Uh huh. And and I know I guess it touched something. Maybe there's something there. It's all in the salad spinner right now, isn't it, Candace? I'm, I'm over here dancing. Hold on. She's dancing. I'm pressing the button on the salad spinner. Go ahead, Candace. Uh, okay, so. I'm so happy about this. Okay, so Everett, as we found out, his name is Bobby. Bobby Everett. Okay, so for those who are like saying, I just said that, you know, I just said that, no, 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 we're not doing that today. No, 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 no. No. Okay, now, when he was, first and foremost, when he was talking to Julie, because I know a lot of people's press about this, I did find it funny. I did find the funny. And the fact when she said, you know, you look like my friend Nick, my cousin Nick. Okay, uh, obviously we know Blake played Nick. Fallon. So come on now, yeah. we, we know how we know how they do this on soaps when the same actor comes back as a different character. They, yeah. Just like when yeah. Red Vaughn, when um, when no, I'm sorry, when Kyle Lauder and Eric Mossoff had their first yeah. scene, and they was like Brady, no Brady, Bra- I'm Brady, Brady, you're Brady. They they, they do that kind of stuff. Okay, so. Everett kind of got a little defensive when it came to talking about the trauma of regarding his father. Mm-hmm. I'm over here. I'm over here like this. Oh, did we touch the nerves? Why is it that everybody comes to Marlena, Marlena for a therapy session? Like, ain't nobody else around? Okay. So <laughs> I'm like, huh, we got father issues. Isn't it convenient that the next thing we go to was quiet? <laughs> and I said to my, and I said to myself, Oh, I know where you're going. I said to myself, yep. I had a hunch myself. Yep. I said, I said, self, could you be pulling a fast one on me, but it's not a fast one? I was like, so he has issues remembering his father. Like he actually, if y'all notice, he twitched a little bit, right? Did y'all notice that he twitched? Yep. So I was like, oh, we had a nerve. We definitely have hit a nerve. Okay. And so I kept saying from jump, if you guys remember, I've been on this boat, this island, all, you know, Everett has mm-hmm. something to do with the drug stuff. Yeah. Because, because, Steph, because even though Stephanie doesn't know, which girl, okay, Jada went hard. And I'm thinking Jada's a cop, so something must have went down legally. For them, like I can totally see, like something happened. But then I'm like saying to myself, I'm like, sis, okay, it's with Stephanie. What's with me, y'all? She also was with Chad, right? She was, you know, Chad, right? I can totally see yeah. Everett being the one. First and foremost, Vinny, get ready for this. This, this is gonna blow your mind. I can totally okay. see Vinny being the one who, first and foremost, is a part of the drug circle. One. Two, I can see him being the one to set the fire at the Horton house. And you're probably wondering, why would Everett do that, Candace? What I'm not a guy, girl. Would he yep, do yep, this? Yep, 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 yep. Well, there's a reason that Everett would yep. do this. Because, see, the Horton, well, <laughs> a certain Horton was killed. She wasn't supposed to be killed. But the person who did it went to jail 
that person who went to jail was Clyde. He know Clyde, the father mm-hmm. of Ben and Jordan. Right. And Everett. Yeah. What I said just now? The father yep. of wow. Ben, Jordan, and Everett. There's got to yep. be a top because here's the thing. You could you could do this. And no, it hasn't been announced yet, but if you're watching the show, first and foremost, you know the history of Clyde. Clyde literally has yep. done something to each child to the point we thought, Vinny, I don't, I, how long have you been watching, Dave? Only about a year. Okay, so give you, give you a little backstory real quick, a short one. Ben's sister, Jordan, right, played by mm-hmm. Chris Hey, girl. We, it was such a theory that Clyde molested and raped, because, you know, his days went off, raped Jordan. And that Jordan was really Ben's mother. Okay. Oh wow. Yeah, but but thankfully they, they somebody knew we were talking on the streets of Twitter, and they kind of dissolved mm-hmm. it. Even though I still sometimes think about it. Okay, but Jordan was assault. She was nuts with. The same mm-hmm. thing with Ben. So Clyde is an abusive, like physically and mentally father. So yep. then it's always the question of, okay, could he have done something else? Then we got all of a sudden when this drug story happens, here comes Everett. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, Everett is, 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 is sneaking around doing all this stuff, okay. But then it's like it's just so many, it's like a connection that I'm feeling. I, I, I mean, I'm glad I'm not the only one. But that is the strong theory right now on the streets of social media that – Clyde is Everett's father who did something to him. And Everett is trying to, like, it's a weird cycle. But, yeah. Mm hmm. Yup. 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 Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Vinny, mm-hmm. any uh, reactions yeah. or questions? I, I, I'm trying to process everything with that. It's, it's actually, it's a really good theory, and it's something that. I'm trying to piece together the dots. Please. So let's, 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 let me started... give you a little bit more history. Sister, of, you know, alleged sister Jordan was yeah. the normal one for a long time. She, mm-hmm. she was a physical therapist and she was like a little bit of a victim and she had like normalcy and, and, and the frailty and the cute, like, ah, I'm Jordan. My daddy was bad, but I, I survived. We didn't know all of her demons. Okay. Yeah. Brother Ben. Um, who eventually became Alex, but that's a whole other story for right. a whole other yeah. podcast. Yeah, I, I know Ben's uh, that story. Okay. <laughs> he became a strangler. Um, you know, he was abusive to women. Yeah. He, he, he had a good run. And then, and then he found he got, Jesus. He found yeah, he got with Jesus. Abigail. He found Abigail first. Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. Sorry, Sin fans. But before he kind of was cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, him and Abby were yes. saying to the point where we thought that Abby was pregnant. With Ben's baby. Yep. Uh huh. Okay, let's get to there. Okay, so that's his siblings, or, or alleged, alleged siblings. Um, mm-hmm. you know, they they tried to whitewash, uh, you know, Clyde for a little bit, and 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 and, and you know, he played up on poor Nancy. Oh, Nancy, I'm so sorry, honey. Aww. Um, but you know, okay. Days, if if this is where you're going, and I strongly suspect that you are, thank you. I'm kudos. I'm 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 some completely down for it. All right, I'm gonna get us on the jetliner and and bring us right on up to Port Charles. Um, yep. Oh oh, oh, oh hello. I'm raring to go. I'm raring to go. Okay. I don't even know where to. So you know where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start with this. I needed to see the scenes between Maurice Bernard and Cynthia Watros, a.k.a. Sonny and Nina. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. the couple that y'all gave us, you know, with the other writing regime, um, no. So I needed to see these. Thank you so very much. All right, General, I, I'm, I'm being really, I'm being street so Anthony today. I'm, um, you know, and, and Vinny, if, in case I'll, I'll stop saying it after this episode, I have been watching the show <laughs> since I'm three years old. These are my people. Okay, having said that, all right, um, I'm going to forgive you 
for teasing us and tantalizing us with a potential Sonny and a pair of. I'm going to forgive you for that. that you know, it's, again, we're going to throw it on those people that are gone now. We don't have to worry about them no more. Um, no, we still got an outline, Anthony. We still got well, an outline. Yeah, we're still on Danny Chris's outline until next week. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. Okay. No, but yeah. the point I'm going to this, y'all giving me the thing I have wanted forever. <laughs> please, 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 please be giving me the thing I have wanted forever. Please, General Hospital, I am begging you. You, If you are giving me Sonny and Ava, then give me Sonny and Ava. Give me Nina going off the damn rails and becoming cool yeah. for Cocoa Puffs again. I can't, yes. I yeah. cannot simple with her no more. I, y'all all know on this call what a Nina fan I have been through all of it. Yeah. I can't no more. I'm John General Hospital. Y'all need to just throw her up into the insanity and give her away. She has served her purpose. Cynthia Rachos, it is nothing against you, honey. I love to hate you, but I cannot simple yeah. with you no more. I can't do it. I can't do I, it. I said the same thing. <laughs> Absolutely. I said the exact same thing. I posted that normally I'm a Nina tolerator and not much of, the, of a defender, but I'm able to go along with it, but I just can't take it anymore. Like, okay, just now I'm going to go this even harder, Vinny. Hold your, buckle up, put that seatbelt on, get yep. ready for the oxygen mask to drop, because I'm going to go even <laughs> further. Make her go nuts. Make oh, her yeah, absolutely. I want her to go nuts. Cake and let her take a few people out while she is on her way out. And I'm going to yes. start with, I am sorry, Michael Easton. I have been with you in all. Every incarnation of ABC you have lived with. Take out Finn. Just, just, just help us out and take him out with this storyline. Okay. I'm going to take a deep breath as my therapist has instructed me when I talk about General Hospital. Oh, Lord. Okay. I don't know what you're doing with John. I can see it. I can see it. I know what you're doing with John. Look at Anna's next lover du jour. Um, <laughs> I don't know why. Now I'm going to go over to Cyrus. Okay. Y'all, <laughs> this is another amazing actor. But y'all have rung us through the roof with this man. You need to pick a direction, and you need to give it to us and bring it on. This it, 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 limbo has got to end. I see. I think I, I honestly feel like they have chosen the direction, and people just aren't accepting it. Like they're they're showing the reaction of the people in Poor Charles that are not accepting him as a changed person, who because All of right. his past. So I feel like the case, that he actually did change. If that's the case, then they need to bring the drama there and move it to the next level somehow. They need to solidify yes. that this is it. I, I, they could change their mind like nine months later, but they need to anchor it somehow because this is this is it's like Nina simpering. We're getting because we don't care that much about this part of it, you know. Blah blah blah. Okay. Thank you for bringing back Selena Wu. Um, if you have not learned by now, General Hospital. Bag her, plead her, you know, bring extra, like, you know, $300 water her to her dressing room. I, I, I bring this woman more majorly into the character, you know, into the storyline. Yeah. Work this yep. out. Hello. I am done seeing her as the supporting, you, you, you know, barely supporting actress. Bring her up and give her her due. She is an Obrex in the making. And I'm saving, She's I'm missing wonderful. other stuff that I... I, she is. Uh, oh, uh, you know what? Okay. Um, it was so unnecessary, but thank you so much for giving it to us anyway. Because I'm sorry, Heather Mills as uh, uh, Heather Mills, um, Allie Mills as Heather Weber. I honestly, at this point, I don't care what shenanigans you put her in at this point. She's just that good. Yeah, phenomenal. It. I love Robin. And Robin, if you ever want to piggyback like they did on Roseanne, one episode is you and one episode is Allie, I would be in soap heaven. I would be having major, like, massage moments. Um, having said that, though, <laughs> here's the moment. 
Mm-hmm. Carly. Mm-hmm. Is it you? It's me. Sorry, so How can you be here? Girl, how many times has he been dead back? How many times has your husband been dead back? Oh, mm-hmm. oh, oh, I'm sorry. I was again. How many times has you been dead? i back. Is it still you? But, um, I, oh, my God, the chemistry, though. Even though I was like, okay, this dialogue kind of sucks. Um, the chemistry. Oh, please, General Hospital, please. Do not have Jason Morgan kill his just found weird. You know, I could say a lot of things. Poor Drew. That character never had a chance. General Hospital, please do not have brother kill brother. No, right, don't do that. Go next. No, no. I, I have a question I, I for y'all. Do, do you yeah, think a well? Sometimes I'm nagging at me and says maybe Ava is the oh the one that's um the insider that's planning it. I mean, no. I think oh, she's using oh, no. Sonny. But okay. Wait a minute, let me, let me say this real quick. Do I think that Ava is trying to take down Sonny because of her own agenda? Yes, I did. I'm going to tell you something. General Hospital, you need a storyline like this to go into May Street. Because my whole thing is oh. that, yeah, it is, it is too weird that now all of a sudden Sonny is back to 2002 mobster Sonny, okay? Mm. We got Ava over here acting like she don't know nothing. But she did. She's working something. Isn't it funny that Olivia Jerome is dead? Yeah. And mm. so you took your own sister out so you can move up to the chain. Okay? Mm-hmm. You got Mrs. Woo Woo. Hey, girl. Do I think they're working together? No, I don't. However, I do feel as though there's a lot of betrayal going on. Somebody's being a mold. And, yeah, by the way, real quick, uh, to uh, the actor who plays John Jagger Kate. Baby, you Adam are the best Harrington. thing that has happened to General Hospital in a very long time. And yeah. I am proud to say that. So can oh, you like a breath of fresh air? Because he called Sonny out saying you use stone dust to make your popularity popular. I was like, hey, you need no lie. Detective, there's no lie. I feel as though that, what yep. can possibly happen is Ava gets in close to Sonny. We find out that, yeah, quote unquote, Jagger. Ava thinks Jagger is on her side. <laughs> no, Jagger is trying to take down the whole mob stuff. And by the way, with Jason, I need for Jason to have made a deal with the devil, the feds, to work. I feel like there's been a lot of work inside trying to take down the mob life. I'm here for it to go there, General Hospital. Patrick Elizabeth, I know we're still in Dan and Chris's outline. Elizabeth, you have three weeks to do your thing before you and Patrick stuff shows up. I need for this, I swear, I need this story, you guys. I need May Sweet. Y'all remember May Sweet from General Hospital? Come on now. Y'all know, y'all know what I'm talking about. Yep. I, I need that because I swear, if you don't do it, like I said, I'm giving the new regime till June. I'm giving it till June. You're tough, but, Candace. Oh, we only got a minute and a half. Oh, okay. Okay, then I'm going to jump in and say, I agree with you, Candace, except for one thing. Uh, I'm I'm thinking it's an Ava Jason connection. They was going to try that, and that didn't happen. That, that would make sense, funny. actually. Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, Vinny. We'll talk Vinny, about it in we'll a few talk, weeks. We'll talk about it. Yep. All right. Great. Thank you, Tony. Good night, everyone. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you, Tony Pinkins. Good night, everybody. Get connected with Take Two Radio on Facebook or Twitter at Take Two Radio. For email updates on future shows, follow at Blog Talk Radio. For previous episodes, upcoming guests, and more, visit Take2Radio.com.